first of all, uh, thank you for being here. This is the beginning of the season that uh, we have all um, come to know and love. Um, it's hurricane season, uh, as evidenced by the fact that there is already a disturbance out in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, it is time now for everyone to start planning and preparing for what is predicted to be a very, very active hurricane season. As all of you know, because you were here many times last year, uh, we lived through what potentially could have been the most devastating hurricane that had ever hit the Tampa Bay area. Uh, but for the fact that it jogged 20, 30 miles to the east, uh, we would have taken a direct hit that we would probably not have recovered from for a decade. Um, we did not take that hit. But I think what the community and what the world saw was a city that prepares for these events and that trains hard. Um, we spend a good part of the year um, preparing for these kinds of events. And we learn from every one of them that we go through, as we learn from Irma. Uh, we incorporate what worked and improve on it. And we discard what we found didn't work. And there was uh, a combination of both. Uh, fortunately, we have a plan in place as a city uh, that I think is as good as anybody's in the country. And I think the, uh, the world saw a city that was prepared uh, for what was about to occur. That being said, people have hurricane am amnesia. And we need to remind folks every year that they need to prepare themselves. Although we have avoided being hit for over 90 years, our day will come. We will take a direct hit at some point. It is inevitable. And so for those folks that live in our community, particularly in those areas that are low-lying, um, it is absolutely critical that you prepare uh, for a storm and you prepare your hurricane kit and you make your lists and you do all of your due diligence and you get your supplies not when the hurricane is bearing down on us, but that you get your supplies and prepare your kit long in advance of a storm coming. It is absolutely critical. The more we do this, the better we get at it. But every year, there are people who do not do what they need to do um, and find themselves, when that moment arrives, completely unprepared or unready for a storm. That includes where you're going to evacuate. What are you going to do with your pets? What are you going to do with senior citizens? Are you looking out for your neighbors, particularly those that are infirm or elderly? Do you have your supplies ready? Do you have a place to go? All of those things need to be decided before the storm hits. We saw it last year. We saw a lot of people who were ready and who listened to us when we said it was time to evacuate. But I also know, both anecdotally and through personal experience, that there were a lot of people in this city that were not prepared for that storm even as much advance warning as we all had for that storm. We don't want to go through that again. I have said many, many times, if you don't prepare, there's a possibility that we're going to come for you in, in a body bag. Let's not do that. Let's make sure that everyone takes the appropriate precautions and that we are ready if and when, and it's more likely that it's going to be when um, a storm hits. Um, it is a volatile environment out there, and we will see a very busy hurricane season. Start your preparation now. Uh, don't wait. Let me introduce uh, Chief Brian Dugan, or, or Nick. Nick, I think you're up. Chief Fire Chief Nicholas Cicero. Good morning. Uh, Nicholas Cicero, City of Tampa Fire Rescue. As the mayor nicely stated, uh, one thing I would like to mention is, is that while today the sky is blue and the clouds are white, these are the days that we really need to really consider uh, how we prepare and how we organize our thoughts as far as if that day will come. As the, as the mayor uh, stated, uh, you don't want to wait to the last minute. We have a lot of things that, that need to be considered. Uh, and two quick thoughts is, is, is uh, a, a little saying is, 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 you know, know your zone and you don't go alone, which means know where you live. If you're truly living in a coastal area, know that you need to likely evacuate. If you're living adjacent to uh, a coastal area, know what evacuation zone that you do live in. And if the storm gets close, 
and you do have to evacuate, know where you're going to go. All of these things uh, that you can consider in advance of a moving storm certainly will help you. It's already stressful enough. This planning aspect, in addition to preparing for the storm, is not something that you want to deal with at the same time. So uh, a little consideration for those. Uh, one other thing that I would, we would like to stress is, is that uh, please don't forget about the state of Florida tax holiday. Uh, and that runs from uh, Friday, June 1st through Thursday, June 7th. Please take advantage of that. Some of the items included are uh, ice chests, uh, batteries, weather radios. Uh, and you can get a full list at floridarevenue.com uh, slash disaster prep. All of those items that would be applicable are on that website. Uh, we can't implore to you enough to have enough items for sustainability for your for your family and your home as a minimum of 72 hours and it could be as long as four to five days uh, during the storm i personally lost power for about four days uh, and the storm prep that we all have to go through really paid off uh, on a personal note so please take that 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 heat as well so one other last thing is, is that uh, as a community and as, and as a neighborhood please watch out for your neighbors uh, ensure each other's safety and please as the mayor said uh, be mindful of those that have pets and the care in which is given to them uh, as we don't want them uh, running free and causing other issues as well so with that I would like to turn it over to Police Chief Ryan Duke. Thanks Nick you know communication is key in these type of situations and it can serve save lives and we learned that uh last year we learned so much during hurricane irma and uh you know i can tell you that it was three o'clock in the morning when we responded out on the street and started briefing the mayor you know early as to what was going on and quickly doing assessments uh looking for flooding and everything and in the pitch dark and you know i want to remind everybody that if you go to tampagov.net flood map uh, we actually put out where the areas are flooding. We've been doing that the last couple of days. We did it last year, but it keeps everybody. It's it's routinely updated from the officers on the street that are giving back information to our command center and communication center, and that information is being put out to the public. We also urge everybody to sign up for Tampa Ready. If they text the words Tampa Ready to 888-777, They'll receive the emergency text and alerts as to what's going on. Uh, for Spanish, if they do uh, Tampa Lista to 888-777, the same exact number, and that can give you updates. One of the other initiatives that we rolled out back in October when the mayor was pushing about us being an autism-friendly city, we have our autism special needs registry with the police department. And I remind everyone if they could sign up because it, it goes through a whole list of whether it's autism, Alzheimer's, or some type of disability. If there's any information that you want the police department and your first responders to know about, please have them register. Um, you know, I remind everybody that if we have to come out to your house, storms can be very stressful to everyone involved, especially those with special needs. And I would remind people to think about having prescription refills and things like that and really having a list of the, of the things that you need. And so I think, you know, the communication is very important and being prepared. I personally have been going to our roll calls with our police officers this past month, reminding them that hurricane season is right around the corner and that they too have to have a plan. Last year during Irma, we called in every police officer and had them down on the street during the storm. So that's how important it is. Um, next up, we have from the National Weather Service, uh, Tampa Bay Meteorologist in Charge, Brian Lamar. All right, thanks. Um, morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to, again, reemphasize a lot of the points that we heard uh, so far this morning, really emphasizing uh, public safety and preparedness during the hurricane season. Uh, one thing I want to mention also, you've heard the theme, you know, of uh, hurricane season being, you know, June 1st to November 30th. And it is true, and I think Florida and the Tampa Bay area are really only seeing two seasons throughout any given year. And that's the hurricane season from June 1 to November 30, and also preparing for hurricane season uh, from December through May. And, and we're in that season right now. And as Mayor Buckhorn mentioned, we do have a, a disturbance in the southern Gulf of Mexico. It's not unusual to see that this time of year. And we possibly be looking for very heavy rain and potential flooding moving up into the area 
across Tampa Bay uh, the remainder of this week and through the Memorial Day weekend. So again, use the time now to really develop your safety plan, know where you're gonna go before tropical systems come our way. You know, as, as Mayor Buckhorn mentioned, you don't, you, you don't wanna wait until you're under an evacuation order or a hurricane watcher warning from the National Weather Service. You wanna make sure that you have a plan now. And looking at the month of June is another really interesting time of year for Tampa Bay. Uh, we can go back to June of 2012 when we had Tropical Storm Debbie. June of 2013 with Tropical Storm Andrea. June of 2016, Tropical Storm Colin. My point on that one is that June is a peak for the west coast of Florida for these early season storms. And as Mayor Buckhorn mentioned, uh, the Tampa Bay area has not seen a hit from a major hurricane since October 25th, 1921. So again, uh, a, a lot of impacts could be happening in this area. We have to make sure we're prepared. Uh, but Mayor Buckhorn and I have worked together for several years uh, ensuring that the city of Tampa is prepared. And we, we saw that last year with Hurricane Irma. We definitely dodged a bullet. Uh, it was a drill for a lot of us to make sure that we saw what potentially could happen. The water left Tampa Bay during Hurricane Irma. Four to seven feet left Tampa Bay. You know, if we had Irma just jog about 50 miles to our west, we would see about maybe 15 to 20 feet with that particular storm. This area has not seen that before, but as Mayor Buckhorn mentioned, it, it's not a matter of if, it's when. So again, I wanna thank the city of Tampa for working so closely with the National Weather Service and definitely wanna make sure that we all prepare the season. They could. Um, I think we've seen over the last year as the, a result of the tens of millions of dollars that we have now invested into our stormwater system. Um, we basically have rotor rooted um, the vast majority of the pipes, certainly in South Tampa, clean hundreds of miles of swales and ditches. Um, I think the ability for that stormwater, which used to sit in the streets and cause flooding, to now move out to the bay where it belongs is signif significantly enhanced. So I think if we do get the heavy rains that Brian talked about, I do think it will be a test of those improvements. Um, clearly, we have more work to do, but we have taken out over 600,000 tons, I think, of debris from our stormwater system that really has opened up those pipes. They sent me a, a picture, Lloyd, that before we started this process, it was a 60-inch pipe in South Tampa that only had this much clearance. The rest of it was entirely filled with debris. And so we got in there and cleaned out the debris in pipes like that all over South Tampa. So the water, as you saw last year, um, we didn't have any major flooding on Bayshore at all. And I think it's largely because of that work that we did in the stormwater system. Were there any major lessons you learned from Irma? Something that you thought would work that didn't work, or something that didn't work? Yeah, I think the first lesson is uh, don't bring my 12-year-old's pink sleeping bag um, to the command center, uh, especially since it only came up to about here on me. And in, in the one hour of sleep that I got in, during those three days down in the gym uh, downstairs, that uh, th that sleeping bag was not appropriate. Um, Corey, we learn every time we go through one of these things. And, and I think the fundamentals of our plan are solid. I think the world saw that. Um, I think the execution of the plan was absolutely perfect. Um, but there are always things that we learn going through this that we try to improve on. Um, you know, nothing major per se, but there's, you know, we've changed some of the layout here in this building. Uh, we've looked at, um, you know, how we get fuel and, and get fuel to the people that need it. Um, we look at things as simple as um, the food that comes to this emergency command center when we're all here hunkered down for days. Um, the after action report that we did after Irma was thorough. Um, and now we just incorporate that into our daily plans and moving forward. But there was nothing major and nothing glaring in there that we found uh, that needed to be improved. But improvement is a uh, daily uh, occurrence for us. Yeah, and that was a legitimate uh, concern on the part of both of ours. And I think the communication between the county and the city has gotten much better as a result of that. Um, the, uh, in, in terms of 
making sure that the timing of those announcements coincide with the availability of the shelters that are functioning and staffed. Um, we have different challenges in the city than the county. You know, some of our low-lying areas like Davis Islands and Bay Shore area and High Park, um, the, the damage would be far more significant. So I don't regret at all calling for the evacuation when we did. But at the same time, I recognize that the communications needs to be better. In terms of the curfew, um, I will call a curfew when it's appropriate for the city. Um, the county doesn't speak for me. Uh, the mayor has jurisdiction as to when that curfew is called or not. Um, but certainly we will do our best to communicate with the county in a more efficient way. Yeah. You know, one of the things you really can add to is an unprecedented amount of uh, unannounced debris yeah. left over the night. Is there anything that you can do ahead of time or have you done anything to kind of, you know, fight that problem before you get there? You know, um, most of that debris was storm related, Ron. Um, if any of you saw the debris field, I think there was, I don't know how many, 100,000 yards of debris. Um, as a result of that storm. So to the extent that we can get in early and cut some of the limbs and trim some of the overhanging branches and Tico doing the same, we'll eliminate some of that. But with a storm of that magnitude, you're always going to have significant amount of debris. We should be thankful that that's our major problem, that it wasn't water intrusion. It wasn't, um, you know, the 15 feet that Brian talked about that would have flooded my office had we taken a direct hit. Um, we can manage debris, um, but I think Tico and the city has really gone through over the last year to try and trim those trees, particularly those around power lines, uh, because oftentimes it's the debris falling from the trees that takes out the power lines. Uh, but there will always be those challenges. Yeah, you just have to manage it as best you can. Um, yeah, the issue for us with electricity, and obviously I can't speak for Tico, um, the, the challenge for the city in terms of electricity is that we lost 90 um, generators at our stormwater pump stations. We lost power to them, which meant that potentially, had that storm been worse, we would have had significant overflow of our stormwater system because we didn't have the power to the pumps to pump it to move it to the plant. Um, we have bought a lot of additional generators uh, in order to try to alleviate that. It still remains a problem. Um, I think Tico has worked on trying to harden uh, those systems uh, to a greater degree. Um, but that's where you saw in the case of both St. Pete and Tampa, when the pumps go down at these stations, uh, that's where you get the sewage overflow into, into uh, the streets. Fortunately, we did not have much of it this time. I think this storm partially because of what happened in Houston in the run-up to this storm um, and the awareness of people about what happened in Houston. I think people were more cognizant of it. I think the sort of meandering path that this storm took from the East Coast to the West Coast allowed people to pay attention quicker. Um, so I think they were better prepared. I think the governor was hugely helpful in getting gas and fuel down to the affected areas quicker uh, than normally has occurred in the state government. And all of our partners were wonderful to work with and very efficient. Everyone stayed in their lane and did their thing. Um, so I think the issue of getting fuel to the port and getting the fuel to the gas stations was better than it's ever been. It always will be a challenge. Um, but I think every time, again, we go through one of these, we learn what works and what doesn't work, and we've improved it immensely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there always will be. You know, when that port closes, that port is the, pre the predominant supplier of gas to all of Central Florida. And if you can't get a ship in there, you can't get gas out. And so what they had to do is run the trucks that had to, because the storm was so big, they had to pre-position the trucks up in Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, as opposed to what is normally done, Dahlia, where the storm hits one part of the state, you pre-position the trucks on the other side of the state, which means you can get here quicker. Those trucks both power trucks and gas trucks had to come from Alabama, Georgia, and then come into the state. And until the port opened up, we couldn't get ships in here to supply the gas stations. So, you know, they can stock up on gas uh, if need be, make sure they have a plan, make sure they fill their tanks in anticipation of the storm coming, um, get out early before the lines occur. Um, 
you know, it's there are things that you can do to mitigate it, but there's always going to be challenges. Yeah. Anecdotally, I saw a lot of people after the storm saying, you know, the model's a couple days out, had it coming right up Tampa Bay, and then it shifted, and so, you know, they made a big stink about it and nothing happened. So, obviously, had that track maintained, you would have had a very different scenario, mm -hmm. but how do you... How do you mitigate that complacency from people who said, well, they said it would be bad and then it wasn't, so. You know, I can't legislate stupid. Um, what we can do is just tell the truth and tell them what we know. And people then choose to make their own decisions. Uh, those decisions can cost them their lives um, or they can save their lives. And so I will not um, hesitate to tell the folks what I think they need to know, even if it means inconvenience in them and the, and the storm goes away. And um, because I'd rather have them alive and I'd rather have them um, able to spend the rest of their lives with their families than have them dead because they didn't listen. And so if I have to inconvenience you by telling you it's time to go, um, I'm sorry, um, but I don't want to come and pick up your body. And so People need to understand that, and particularly uh, those who are not from Florida and don't appreciate the power of these storms and what potentially can happen. Um, they need to pay attention. They need to listen because I wouldn't be telling you to go if I didn't think it was necessary. Um, I think they should stockpile as much as they think they need. I mean, you can't have not have enough water, whether it's for bathing, whether it's for drinking, whether it's for cooking. Um, the more water that you have, the better off you are. So I would buy as much as you think you need. Yeah. What we're looking at is there's a specific weather pattern that is, you know, El Nino and La Nina. And so when we're looking at a neutral period, we're actually in between the two. We're in between El Nino and La Nina. And what that means is we have less wind across the Gulf of Mexico, less wind shear across the Caribbean. And that allows these storms to develop. And so as they come in from the Atlantic or come in from the Gulf, as we may see this weekend, uh, there's not a lot of wind to break them apart. And so that's typically what we look at to forecast uh, the season. So because we're in between the El Nino and La Nina pattern, uh, the water temperatures are much warmer uh, than average right now. They're warmer than normal this time of year because we had a very warm winter. Uh, when you get warmer water, you have an increased potential of having more of these storms. And so that's what allows us to forecast uh, the season. And that's why on average, we see about uh, 12 named storms a year, six of which become hurricanes and three of which become major hurricanes. And we're looking for this season to be above that uh, so again, and, and I, I want to make a point also, uh, I think we've all said it in the past, is that it, it really doesn't matter how many storms are forecast. You can go back, uh, especially everyone in this state remembers 1992 with Hurricane Andrew. You know, that was a below normal season. And the first named storm, Andrew, in, in, in August uh, did devastating impacts, uh, some of which people are still uh, living with today. So again, uh, any storm can definitely uh, produce a lot of damage. Right, this storm I would hope so. And as uh, Mayor Buckhorn also mentioned, you know, we want to use days like today when it's, it's sunny right now to get out there and, and get supplies. You may not need them for two months, but at least you'll have them. And you won't be battling the lines uh, for supplies and, and fuel or whatever it may be. Uh, but again, the system that we're looking at in the Gulf of Mexico is going to uh, bring us rain, uh, potentially flooding rain this weekend. And whether or not it develops, we'll still have those impacts. Uh, so again, the fact that the public has actually been talking about the system for actually over two and a half weeks, uh, the computer models from uh, the National Weather Service have been forecasting something to develop uh, in the Gulf of Mexico before a cloud was even there. Uh, so it shows the impressive uh, forecasting ability uh, that we have in the National Weather Service and NOAA and in partnership with the city of Tampa, uh, we're able to provide that information. So again, this could be an opportunity to help people get prepared. We asked the mayor if there were any updates or changes that the city learned lessons from last year. Uh, from the National Weather Service perspective, any, any changes or updates on how you're going to be predicting storms, forecasting storms, you know, calling for evacuation? 
There are changes, and, and we're actually looking at providing hurricane uh, and tropical storm watches and warnings with uh, more advanced lead time. And so that allows people to get evacuation orders in place. That allows people to get uh, into safer areas. Uh, so again, the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center in Miami will be issuing these watches and warnings uh, ahead of time than what we did in the past when a storm develops. And also another one is about storm surge. And so we uh, issue these uh, flood potential maps. And that has been really important because it shows the public how much water potentially could be in your area above ground level. And so that enables emergency managers and Mayor Barcorn to actually make effective decisions on whether or not to evacuate people. So again, uh, we're providing information ahead of time and we're providing more uh, technologically advanced tools to forecast storm surge, which actually is the number one killer of tropical storms and hurricanes. It's the water that moves into the area that people need to prepare for. Uh, typically, a hurricane watch, we're going to be providing that anywhere up to about 48 hours in advance, where it used to be 36 hours. And hurricane warnings used to be about 24 hours. Now we're going about 36, so about an extra 12 hours, which can definitely help people plan for evacuations, get out of the area, and get the supplies they need. Mayor, can you talk about the evacuation route, uh, whether you can plan for one in advance? And if so, what do you consider the uh, the, for answer to the first question is yes, absolutely. You need to plan your evacuation route. You need to plan what your destination is, where you're staying. Uh, if you're going to get hotel reservations, do it far in advance. If you're staying with family, plan your, your route out there. I mean, the challenge on the evacuation routes is, particularly uh, for the Tampa Bay area, is that you have Pinellas County, which is a low-lying area that has limited means of evacuation out of Pinellas County. Um, the pre predominant routes are the bridges. And when the wind is sustained at 40 miles an hour or greater, those bridges close down. And so people evacuating out of Pinellas County really have to plan far in advance um, when they're going to evacuate because what you don't want is a situation where all of a sudden you have to evacuate and the Gandy, Howard Franklin, Skyway, um, and the Causeway are all closed. So that leaves you only one route up 19 to get to North Pinellas. Um, so get out, get out early, choose your route appropriately. Don't wait to the last minute because you're going to end up in a traffic jam on the interstate that will take what is normally a two or three hour journey and turn it into a 10 hour journey at best. Uh, you got to prepare for the gas, the needs for gasoline. Um, all of this goes into that planning document that you that we want every family to have. Um, we we live on a peninsula basically, and so you got to assume that um, that that needs to be accommodated when you're looking at your plans. I mean, we saw the traffic on the interstate exiting as a result of Irma, and part of the problem was everybody from South Florida came to the west coast of Florida. The storm comes to the west coast of Florida, and everyone now starts going north Florida. So you, you doubled or tripled the volume of traffic on the interstates uh, as a result of so many people having to evacuate because the storm was so massive and encompassed the entire state as opposed to just a, a section of the state. So prepare for the worst. I mean, just assume that it's going to be the worst and prepare accordingly. Okay. Thanks, everybody.